but they were fighting with the fishing hole just around from the just around from the hospital and and DC was out stronger than Daniel and Daniel tried to take a knife and DC with it pointed toward his eye DC grabs it and says give it to me he's only like uh, five six years old he grabs it and pulls it from Daniel and stabs himself right now he screams I go there and the boy's got a cut in his eye I see it the cut is at least almost a half an inch I see the cut and I pick him up and, and barely sees it and she goes what are we going to do I said we're taking him to the hospital now so we get him to go to the hospital, and when we pick him up and put him in the car, she says, go, 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 go. We're right around the corner, Haven's Gardens, Boca County Hospital. I, I, as I pulled out of Haven's Gardens, the Lord spoke to me and said, have you talked to me about this yet? And I said, no, sir. He said, don't you think you should? So I pulled over the car. Everybody said, what are you doing? What are you doing? His eye is bleeding. Get out of here. She was holding him and his hand, had blood in her hand. I said, Lord, just check me. So he pulled over and I said, hand him here. We prayed for him. We got to the hospital. They rushed him on back in the back and said, Mr. Limp, we don't see any cut. It's gone. There's blood in his eye. There's dry blood everywhere. He's bled, but we don't know where from. There's not a cut in his eye. I said, I just saw it. That's where the blood came from. And his doctor said, well, he may have, but I'm telling you, all we got is dry blood. There is no cut. I said, well, praise God. And so that night, Beverly had an assist rupture on an ogre. We didn't know what it was. We just know how bad a pain she was in. And so I was expecting God to do the same thing then that he had done with D.C. earlier, just a few hours earlier. But guess what? The next morning, uh, Beverly was in major surgery. Matter of fact, it was so major, the doctor said, I, I said, we got to wait for the insurance to come up so we can ask him, can we do it? He said, we can't wait. I said, wait a minute. God, now, now, now you healed DC. You took the, you took the cut away. And now here's Beverly, and, and, and she's having major surgery. This doesn't make sense. But that was lessons I was learning in faith. Matter of fact, the doctor even told us that if we hadn't got it in, it might have been a lot worse than we could ever imagine. So, so again, confusion. Misunderstood his words. The signs that you stood on God's word, stood on it, and refused to back off of it, and still the devil came and just wreaked havoc in your home. Look, then, then they were just depressed because of the expectations. They were expecting Jesus to reign. They were expecting Jesus to rule. They were expecting Jesus just to blow down uh, uh, the Romans. And instead, the Romans have got him and his hands are behind his back and they put him on a cross and he dies. Uh, there's times we've had unmet expectations. We ever think that God's going to do something for us? God says, I'll, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Both say that, that, that the Lord is my helper. I shall not fear what man shall do unto me. And then here it goes. Wait a minute, God. This was not in the manual. And God says, Maybe you didn't quite read the fine print. Take my whole word, my whole word, put it together and see that many are the trials of the righteous. Many are the affliction, but I will deliver them. And you can boldly say, I will be here for you. I will not turn my back on you, but I never said you wouldn't ever go through anything. That's why my son went through the most awesome, terrible thing you can think of to show you that you can go through it and still be on top. You can still win. So, so, so they were depressed, and now they were depressed, they were desperate. They're locked behind the doors and they need answers. Again, when I find people that the doors are locked, it's because nobody has the key. The door's there, and if the person comes with the right key, they'll open it up. But the door has to have the right key. And sometimes we go to them and say, oh, suck it up, buttercup. Oh, really? Okay. Or, I'll tell you what happened when I went through it and, and I made it and, and uh, suck it up. Oh, really? Thank you. You're so encouraging. I had a person at my church years, years, years ago. She would, she would always say this. No matter what happened, you could lose an arm. And she goes, you don't know nothing. I lost two arms. Really? I never seen that. Every time somebody went to something, she'd always say, you don't know nothing. I'm thinking, boy, you really encourage me when I'm really going through something. So see, 
They're desperate. They need answers. Things are getting rough. So, so, so here's what I'm going to tell you now. Here they are, they're behind these locked doors. In order, when you're behind these locked doors, when you got that, when you got your heart locked down, you got your mind locked down, you got your mind locked in to saying that, that it's not going to get any better. This is the best it's going to be. It's not going to get any better. God, you more or less have just forgotten me. You've got me. You just forget I'm even alive. For some reason, I've been so bad all my life that now I reap on what I sowed and it's going to be bad. And I might as well just go ahead, dig a hole, crawl in it because it's not going to get better. And I'm here to tell you, that's a lie from hell. Don't you know when God called you, He took into account the stuff you're going through now when He called you back then? You think God's going, oops, that wasn't the plan. Get rid of it. No, when God called you, He knew how you were going to slip, how you were going to fall, how you were going to scrape your knee, how you were going to mess up. He knew all that. He still called you in the beginning uh, before you were ever born. I'm going to use this man, even though he's going to consider himself a mess up, I'm going to show him that I specialize in using mess ups. So, 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 faith has to be active in order to be effective. And if it's not active, you're going to put that lock on your mind, that lock on your heart, that lock on relationships. So, see, 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 they moved from faith attacking the situation. That's what they had going on until they saw Jesus being taken away, and Jesus said, put your sword away. Up until that point, Peter drew his sword, he's ready to fight, they're going to fight to the death. They were there, they were going to do it. I was wondering about that thing. He told them, you better be ready. And so here they are, they're ready, and then Peter pulls out the sword and gets ready to do what he's going to do, and Jesus says, put it away. Wait a minute, wait a minute, God. You just told me to be ready, and now I'm ready, and you tell me I'm going into action, and you're telling me to stop. So from this point on, these guys run like a bunch of scared rabbits, because they don't know what to do. Everything they expect. You see, they move from faith attacking the situation to the situation attacking their faith. I find this in my life constantly, just for a moment. I'll be sitting along and I get a phone call. I'll be sitting along and something will happen. And I'll start thinking about it. And then right to start with, the situation attacks faith. And I say, wait a minute. Why am I letting it attack my faith? God's got this. And then it turns around and let my faith attack the situation. And see, so Jesus understood this. That's why he put this in the book. So we'd have it to look at. So we'd have it to see. And so what he want to do is, he's literally wanting us to, to, to learn a lesson. These guys learn it first, but we're learning from them. Amen? So now watch this. Here's some lessons that he taught when he walked through that door. Watch this. Our wounds are very powerful. I know it hurts when we're going through it, but it's very powerful. I, I, I remember some things I've gone through over the years, and you think of things that you've gone through, and if you had your choice, you wouldn't have gone through it. But how many times since you've gone through it you can tell somebody, hey, bro, I'm here with you. You can depend on me. I'm not going to let you go. And they go, but you can't be standing with me because look at what I've done. And you go, I did it too. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know why? Because sometimes we, get, we, we let allow the devil to browbeat us and beat us down and think that we're the only ones that's ever done anything like this or gone through this. And then when the person beside you says, look, look, I've been through it. I'm here to tell you, there is a bright side. There's a bright side of this. You see, we can let our wounds consume us. And if they consume us, we'll be of no help to anybody. I, I know people right now, well many good people, godly people, and walk around with a band-aid. And every time you start talking about why aren't we doing this and why aren't we doing that, have you thought about doing this? They pull back the band-aid and show the hurt. This is why. And they let it fester. They won't let it take the band-aid off and let it heal. They want to keep the band-aid up there and keep it there so whenever they have a problem, they can always pull back and say, this is why. Look what that person done to me. 
Look what they done to me. Look at whoever done to me. That's why I act the way I act. That's why I get the way I do. That's why I do this. And they want to see pulling it back and, and let it fester up again. And they want to keep that wound active. And they don't realize that that wound has consumed them and ruined them to the point that they are no help to anyone. Well, see, if we can overcome, if we can trust God in our misery, we trust God in our wounds, then we have the power of God in our lives, active. And when the power of God is active in your life, you can help so many people. You know, I, I was in there the other day, and, and, and uh, of course, Bethany's going over to help. But Bethany says she don't mind if I tell stuff like this. But, but I was in PCDC one day, and the, and, and the guy was over, over in the Juvies, and the guy was telling me how he got caught for, for drugs. And another guy was telling me how he done this. And looked at me and said, said, but you wouldn't know anything about that. You're the perfect preacher. You know nothing about heroin. And I said, well, if you had a TV in here, you'd have seen a picture of my daughter's picture on the page, on TV. And he said, excuse me? I said, she got to hang around with the wrong people just like you. He said, really? And all of a sudden, the guys that weren't giving me a time of day pulled up, there, pulled up to the door and said, talk to us, please talk to us. You see, when you're going through something, you have your own wounds, your own injuries. They will speak loudly for you. They will open the lock. And some people are locked in because they think nobody can talk to them about it because nobody's been there. So, so, so watch this. 